Amen. Um, Lord, continue to inspire Daniel. Continue to use her voice. Um, I've had people from Trinidad expressing the joy of her singing. May your Holy Spirit rest upon her. As we continue our lesson study in the book of Deuteronomy, and as the song says, I remember, help us never to forget that we are nothing without you. Help us not to forget where you have brought us from and where you intend to take us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Royston, and thank you again, Daniel, for that beautiful item. So we are already at lesson number 10 in our series, Present Truth in Deuteronomy. And today, we're looking at the lesson, Remember, Do Not Forget. Um, our memory verse, uh, actually, we have somebody from our congregation. Good morning, Brother Malachi, young Brother Malachi. He's going to read our memory verse for us this morning, which is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 7. Good morning, Uncle Remember and forget how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Malachi. So when we're told to remember something, then it is important. But if you're also told in the same sentence, and do not forget, then that makes it doubly important. So following on from last week's lesson on repentance comes a lesson on remembrance. We need to understand why it is important to remember. We need to understand what we need to remember. And we need to know how to remember to ensure true repentance. Pastor Royston, as you know, I usually have a, a little one for you at the start. <clears throat> now, when considering the life that some may have led before giving their heart to the Lord, there may be a preference to move on and to leave the past behind. So when considering the, the instruction that God gave to remember, do not forget, is there a possible conflict here for spiritual Israel? Conflict. Mm -hmm. I was looking at, you know, and just, uh, I, I, I'm not a grammarian, you know, but I sometimes try to look intelligent, you know, digging <laughs> into the, the grammar of the old stuff and coming to answer your question. Um, remember seems to be an imperative. It's something that you, you know, you, you, you must do. And as you said, um, do not forget. I was kind of looking at, the, you know, those words. And what I've discovered is that um, one of them is in imperfect tense or, you know, a past action still incomplete. Mm -hmm. um, so it is something that you have started to do, but it's incomplete. So, so what am I saying? It's, it's a continuous process. Um, you have to remember today. You have to remember tomorrow. And if you're, still, um, if you're still living, you have to remember up until that time. Mm -hmm. so, so, so as spiritual Israel, there is a conflict, Elder Johnny, because all of us, including myself, we have an amnesia issue, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, we just sometimes, sometimes we, we say, you know, I did this, or it is because of my wit or my wisdom why, why I have achieved this. And as we go into the lesson, we will discover the reason. I think there's one of the texts when God says, listen, don't forget. Then God went further down and says, oh, by the way, you are going to forget. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of an oxymoron. God saying, don't forget. And then it's, oh, by the way, you're going to forget. Mm -hmm. And that is why he says to us, pass it on to your children and to your children's children. Because what I've discovered is when I, when I teach somebody something, I get to know more about it. But the problem is not knowing about it, but the problem is doing it. Yes. And that's where Israel failed. And that's where we are failing too. There is indeed a conflict within our spirit because we have the flesh and we have the spirit. 
And there's a great controversy that is raging within us yeah. to forget God and to remember uh, our past. Sounds very paradoxical. But if you go online, I've written an article, um, which I think should be published on our website about how we become selfish and self-centered, and so we forget who God is, and we're depending on all this stuff. Over mm. to you, Elder Johnny. Mm. Good, good, good points. Thank you. But do you agree, dear listener and viewer, to what Pastor has just said? When considering the instruction from God to remember, do not forget, is there a possible conflict here for you as spiritual Israel? Let's have your thoughts and your comments on that, and uh, Pastor will read them out. So in the meantime, following creation and the fall of man, it repented the Lord that he made man. So God sent a flood to, to destroy sinful man, except for those that were saved in the ark. Sister Juliet, Juliet sorry, what does Genesis 9, 11 through to 14 say occurred after the flood, please? Okay, um, Genesis 9, verse 11 to 14, and I'm reading from the King James Version. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is a token of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. So here we see that God made a covenant with the people and their generations and also the living creatures after the flood that he, that he will never cut off all flesh by water. It's also interesting to note that, you know, God includes, you know, we live on this earth and we take, you know, advantage of the little things. And our God, he looks at everything, no matter how minute that we think it is. It's interesting that he includes the creatures as well, even those little creepy, crawly things. This points to the loving character of the God that we serve. Mm. That even the lily of the valley he clothed and made preparation for. Look, let's look at the verse, the, the words in verse 12. That the promise, the promise was also made for perpetual generations. Perpetual means everlasting. So this promise is also for us as we are all part of Noah's genealogy. So here they have a reminder of God's saving hand. Here we see an example of the promise-keeping God that we serve. Every time we look at a rainbow in the sky, it is a promise that God is not done with us yet. It's a promise of hope. Two key points that I get from these verses are one, the rainbow is a sign that God will guide us through the storms and the perils of life. And number two, the rainbow is a sign of redemption. You know, I can see God taking his binoculars and looking down through time, and he thought of a plan, a plan to save Noah and his family, from whom a redeemer will come to save us and to give us a chance at eternal life. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Juliet. Some of you may have seen the, the picture may have shrunk there. We're having a few technical problems, but we can definitely hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Sister Juliet. Um, Pastor Andrew, let's just continue verses 15 through to 18 of Genesis 9, and tell us why you think God used the word remember here, please. Um, yes, uh, I'll be reading from the King James Version. Um, I won't read all of it, I'll probably read down to verse 17. Um, and it reads, And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all breaths, and the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember 
the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all the flesh that is upon the earth. Now the interesting thing here is when God uses the word remember in, in this context, he's talking about um, his saving of, of Noah, the, the salvation of um, his salvation act um, and by the waters um, departing and decreasing and the bow in the sky um, God is promising that he won't destroy the earth by a flood again but it's also at that very same time God is decreasing and God has been saving him according to his covenant promise it's showing that God is a God he is remembering and it's sort of a sign to a salvation act, in this case the salvation of Noah um, and his family. Thank you. Uh, we're having a few technical problems, but hopefully everybody understood clearly um, what Pastor Andrew had said there. Um, Pastor Royston, any comments coming in or thoughts on a conflict for there spiritual Israel? There's a lot of comments. I can see that, <clears throat> to some extent, um, the devil doesn't want us to remember, so he's trying to um, mm. create a bit of a technical issue here. But we shall overcome, because we did in the past. Um, Rose says, the conflict is for us to re remain faithful and hopeful each time we come up against trial, as it is man's nature to focus on the problem and not on the problem solver. Mm. Um, Conwin over there, in, in, I think she's in Denmark, she said, of course, it is a conflict all the time. And the question is, how can I please God and please a man? So this is conflict, you know. Mm. Um, and Tony Bromble says, <coughs> excuse me, memory, memory or memory is like a mirror, isn't it? Yeah, it, keeps, it keeps looking in the past and as we try to press to the future. And that's where the problem is sometimes. I'm not saying totally wipe away the past, but the past can be so toxic mm. that you're pulled back on a consistent basis. Karen Beebe says um, she understands what I'm saying because actually they were having the same conversation um, in their worship, like minds think alike, Karen. Um, Nigel Archer made this very important point. He said, remembering is about committing to do something rather than merely recalling something. It's more about obedience and commitment rather than mere knowledge. Mm. I think that's a powerful thought. And that's what Pastor Kodra was saying. Yes. Because as we go into the lesson, he's going to say, God said, remember what I did for you, how I took, I think Thursday's lesson, how I took you out of the land of slavery, out of the land of bondage. It's not just about memory. It's about obedience. Thank you for that, Nigel. Um, there's another thought there which I write. Ruby Redox says, when humans become successful, the tendency is to believe that it is your doing, not that it's God who gave you the health, strength, and knowledge to become successful. And all of us are like that, Elder Johnny. You know, isn't this the great Babylon that I've built? Mm. You know, my mm. goodness, is, is, am I not the best preacher in the church? You know, we, am I not the best? You know, we, we are pulled by our, by, our, by our own selfish ambitions. Can I just give two more thoughts? Okay. Kathy Adams over there in High Wycombe, I thought I said she was in um, Barbados. She laughed at me. <laughs> she says, I'm in High Wycombe past, I wish. <laughs> God, God made a covenant with us for us to remember, for us to be faithful. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What a beautiful, what, what, a, what a beautiful stuff. Sun Sun said, remembering is, is, is a conscious effort and not a passive act. Yeah. Wonderful. And finally, um, Brother Omenga says in the Bible, the word remember is used 146 times. Yes. Uh, many of these are references recording what God has done in the past. Mankind, humankind tends to forget God's goodness. But, um, but the Bible says um, God's goodness and mercy shall fo follow us. And in the Hebrew, it means chasing after us all the days of our lives. Amen. Over to you, Elder John. Thank you, Powerful Pastor. thoughts coming through. We've got a comment from a member of congregation. Good morning, Sister Alana. Everyone, 
Um, what came to mind for me with your questions with the conflict, the flip side of what was being said online and here, could it be that God was also trying to say to them, I showed you mercy, I showed you love, not because of you being deserving because I chose you, mm -hmm. but because I love you. There's nothing mm -hmm. that we do merits anything, mm -hmm. but because of his love for us. And we, the children at the time, were supposed to express this love and mercy to others and not forget who they were before that. Same way we become Christians, we tend to forget mm. that we were once rebellious <laughs> and we tend to be very quick to judge others. Mm. So it's also for this present day for us to remember he forgave us for our foolishness we ought to bear that in mind. Absolutely. Also, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, El we El have Elder Johnny. Just yeah, just one more from you, and then we have somebody else in the congregation. Go, Pastor. Yeah, whilst, whilst Mother Soul is going to the... Carol says, and I, I just had to throw this in because the point that um, Sister Lana made a while ago is a powerful thought. Rem remembering is an active verb. By mm. doing the action, we will not forget. By doing the action, we will not forget. That's right. Draw near to God an action and he will draw near to us. His reaction, an active verb. Yes. Powerful thought, thank you, Indeed. Um, Carol, for that. Indeed, thank you. So, um, Mum, we'll take your point now. Good morning to you. Thank you very much. I would like to deal with the point of remembering. God knows why he said to his people, remember. Because he knows they will forget. If even not all, some will, at any rate. Why all of this from God towards humankind? God made man. And man is existing because part of God is within us. Mm -hmm. When he breathed into that dust, his breath of life, it was part of himself. And we belong to him. Whether we accept it or not, whether we believe it or not, it is so. Mm -hmm. We are told that Christ died on Calvary. Jesus Christ died on Calvary. I must rephrase that. Jesus died on Calvary. For mankind. Adam was his son. He did not make him to die. He made him to live. That's why he put part of himself within him. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we remember God, who God is, if we remember and always believe that we belong to him, then as a parent, the child that is there that has done wrong, even though what is happening, you know the truth of things. But yet still, at times, when the, when the question is asked, prayer, who we can pray for? Mm -hmm. Everybody put their hand up because they know they have a child that needs prayer. Mm -hmm. And this is it with God. This is a big, big, big topic which, you know, speak on it for a few minutes, does not give it justice. That's okay. We does understand. not give it justice. Okay. But God knows we will forget, and it is very important that we remember, because with the debt on Calvary, it's not for nothing 
he wants to save his children and he will be coming back for that. Amen. So I will stop there now. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you've heard those powerful points. Let me throw out another question to you. For many today, God's promise not to destroy the world again by a flood is furthest from their minds when they see a rainbow. Now, what should this fact, i.e. that God's original plan, God's original uh, promise, God's original institution, what should this fact remind us about on the deliberate tactics of the devil in these times. It, it's a mouthful, but all I'm saying is, when we see the, the rainbow, it doesn't automatically, for, for many, doesn't automatically remind you of God's promise. It has other things. You know, is this a deliberate ploy by the devil? Let's have your thoughts on um, that. Um, send them in via radio, if you're listening on the radio, you know how to get in touch, or via chat, and pastor will pick them up. Now, some of the greatest manifestations of God's omnipotence was there for the children of Israel to witness firsthand with their journey out of Egypt to Canaan. Pastor Andrew, if you can read for us Deuteronomy 4, verses 32. Okay, we are going to come back to you in a moment, Pastor Andrew. Sister Gillette, um, oh, I think Pastor Andrew is available. Right, right. So, Pastor, um, Deuteronomy 4, verses 32 through to 36. If you can just read and summarize for us what the children of Israel were told. Okay, so I'll just read a, a couple of verses. Um, Um, can you hear me okay? Okay, you're breaking up a little bit. Um, try, try again, try again. Okay. okay. Uh, one. Okay, what we'll do while you're, you're, you're sorting your bits, Sister Juliet, if I can go to you, we'll come back to Pastor Andrew in a moment, but verses 37 through to 40, um, Moses was highlighting kind of his desire for the nation. If you could pick up on that for us, please, and hopefully we'll drop back to Pastor Andrew in a moment. Okay, uh, so Deuteronomy 4, verse 37 to 40, reading from, again reading from the King James Version. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt, to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord thee is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath there is none else. Mm. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes, his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee, that thou mayst prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Yes. So here we see Moses reminding the people that they are a chosen people, and to remember how God, through his mighty power, took them out of bondage. In remembering, the people were reminded of God's love. And I think that's the, the general theme that we're getting from everyone else here. We're reminded of his love. We're reminded of his, they are reminded, we are reminded of God's love, his mercies, his grace. They're, they're also reminded that he is the only God, the almighty, the all-powerful God, and there is none like him. Moses' desire is for it to go well with the people that they may live longer. Mm. In order for this to happen, Moses is telling them that they have to keep God's statutes and his commandments. How many of us as parents want the best for our children? Mm -hmm. I think we all do. Moses was like a doting dad that had Israel's best interest at heart. If some of us are honest with ourselves, we were, if we were in Moses' shoes, Knowing that we were not going to inherit the promised land, many of us may not have a desire or want to put any effort into helping these stiff-necked people mm. to inherit the land. The bottom line is that the same part of the bargain in keeping 
God's commandment still lies with us today. Yes. It is significant then as it is, in, it is significant now. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is a whole duty of man. And this is found in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Amen. Thank you, Sister Juliet. Let's try going back to Pastor Andrew now. Just earlier verses in the same Deuteronomy 4, 32 through to 36, is just summarizing what uh, Moses, uh, what God was saying to the people via Moses. Yes, it just showed you here what God had given an account of his reported what God had done saying that since uh, man was created, that it has anything like this been seen, how God had delivered them out of Egypt and out of nations and signs and wonders, that God had brought this people out at night, that they may know that the Lord is God, and besides him, there is none else. Mm. And, and that God is, this God that delivered them is the true God. And this is the God that they are to respond to and to love in return. Uh, God's acts of love for them in making himself known to them, in delivering them, they are then to respond to him through obedience, trust, and love um, also. So it is a quite a powerful way of, of, of teaching them so that God will instruct them. They will remember their history. They will look back and see all the wonderful work and how truly there is no God apart from the Lord mm. God of Israel. Okay, we got the gist of that again, still having a few problems there, but yeah, the, the, the importance of them remembering as what we're talking about, remembering the days of the past and, and, and how God had led them. As I was saying earlier, when you think of the parting of the Red Sea, one of the most dramatic events, miraculous workings of, of the Lord, when you think of the ten plagues, when you think of the, the, the pillar of fire by night, all of these things, and, and these were the real evidence that not those generation, but their parents would have been able to, to, to behold. So, Pastor Royston, let me come back to you in terms of um, what's coming in online, um, tactics possibly that the devil is using, any thoughts on that? Well, well, um, someone says the, um, within a social construct, um, the alternate lifestyle group have used it, mm. the rainbow, uh, you know, uh, as a symbol. Um, LG, LGBT community has used that symbol to represent them. Someone talked about scientific knowledge. You know, scientists use it to conceal the idea of God's power, mm. of who God is. Um, someone talked about... Um, that when we see the symbols, flipping it into a positive way, that when we see the symbol, it should remind us as to why God destroyed the earth. And also, we should, we should remember that we're on the judgment. Mm. But obviously, if somebody says the devil is concealing that too. Um, Erlene Samuel says, the rainbow is a promise of God's love for us. <laughs> Another flip side, an assurance that he will not destroy the, wor the world with water again. The devil's static is to use it for secular purposes. We, we, we have seen multiple people using the rainbow to mean multiple things. Mickey Pierce says, I think Mickey should be in um, Trinidad, he says, the devil will use any means to lead us astray, and he's getting more desperate. And I think that is important as a Sabbath school that we recognize the desperate situation that the devil is in. He knows that he has but a short time. M. Williams says, God uses memorial as memory triggers. I like that. To, to teach to an inquiring mind, it's an important part of God's education to us. Um, somebody says, I like this Rodney, Rodney Smith. He says, the church must take the rainbow back. Mm. <laughs> take the rainbow back. That's a very powerful thought. And finally, Elder Johnny, for real, for real, BB, when I was growing up, and even now as an adult, when I see the rainbow, I will look how beautiful the rainbow is, but I, re but I remember of what God had said about the rainbow. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, O'Neill Copeland says, the Lord says, let us reason together. Serving God is the only option. We often think that we have it 
hard serving the Lord, but consider what our position would be without his love. Yeah. Paul says, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Mm -hmm. So the rainbow reminds us of the covenant that God has made. Can I just squeeze one more in Elder Johnny, quickly? Um, two, actually, Andrew and Hazel. Um, um, Kirsty, Kirsty, Kirsty John says, the rainbow is a, is a remembrance for us all its promises of, of what God says, he will not flood the earth. We, that, that was said again. Um, Carla Nacho said, the rainbow promise and delusion can be parallel to the deception in the Garden of Eden. God says one thing and Satan uses it to mean something else and to deceive mankind. What a powerful thought. Indeed. And I forgot last week, Ella Johnny, um, Philip Mann made a comment last week uh, on the lesson. I'm going to find it and I'm going to read it because that was a powerful comment that yes, Philip please. made last week. Over to you, Elder Johnny. Yes, please. That'll be good. Thank you. Keep your thoughts coming in. If you're listening on live radio this morning, this is Croydon Sabbath School panel going out to you live. We want to hear from you as well. So let me go out with another thought for our congregation as well as those listening online. Just like Lot's wife, the hearts of some of the children of Israel were back where they were fleeing from. How do we ensure our focus remains on our destination and not what we should be leaving behind? Think about that, yes? How do we make sure that our focus remains on our destination and not what we should be leaving behind? Looking forward to your comments coming in on that one as well. Now, many people use various tactics to remember important things. Before the digital age, uh, this included writing things down. I remember the, 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 the film, Mightier Than the Sword, the, the written page, writing things down. Um, memorizing, yes? The memory verse was called, it's called a memory verse for a purpose. We are supposed to memorize it. Remember the days of the morning watch and even pathfinders as children learning and there is even the means of tying a knot in one's handkerchief. I think that used to be something that was used to try and remember things. The only problem is with that last method is that you may have forgot why you tied the knot in the first place. So, what does God say to his people, Sister Gillette? Uh, I'm looking at Deuteronomy 4 verse 23. What does God say to his people in this verse, please? Deuteronomy 4, verse 23, and again, reading from the King James Version. Uh, Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord, your God, which he has made, oops, sorry, which he has made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. So there's a serious warning here. The phrase, take heed, is to give serious attention to warnings or advice. Growing up children comes to mind when I read this verse. Mm -hmm. A parent always warns their children of possible dangers that they may encounter in life. I think of a popular saying from home, Hard years, picnic, bite, rock stone. Mm. It just basically means a child who does not listen will experience hardship. Again, we see Moses, the doting father, trying to instill in the people the way how to live a godly life. When we instill values in our children from, from the womb and throughout their lives, they will not forget. When some turn into adulthood, they may turn to their own way, but the teachings of mother and father is still embedded within them. God is able to see in the future, and he saw the path that these people would take. So God is warning them through Moses. We've read time and time again how the full idolatry took over these people's lives, and the devastating consequences that happen when they refuse to take heed. The question is, how many of us are at a crossroad, faced with the pleasure that sin has to offer? On the other hand, um, they're faced with living a life that is idol-free, infused with faith and keeping God's commandments. God has given us free will. Take heed and choose wisely. 
Wow, powerful thoughts I can hear. That's coming from a mother, uh, as you said. I mean, that, that is the thing, and it was brought out earlier that, you know, Moses, God, he, he looking at the children of Israel as, as his own. Um, so, um, Pastor Andrew, I'm going to read a verse, and I, I, I'm, I'm looking for you to kind of state what comes out. Deuteronomy 4, verse 9. In, in fact, actually, let me allow you to read the verse for yourself. What I'm looking for, Deuteronomy 4, verse 9, mm. um, read that and just bring out for us what is the important thing then that uh, is coming out here. Deuteronomy 4, verse 9, please. Okay. And it reads as follows. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Mm. So here are the, some important words that, or phrases that come out here. One, to take heed. Mm. To keep not to forget, and to teach. Mm. And that these things should not depart from your heart. So it reminds me of, um, you know, in Jesus in the New Testament. And he said, he will use often the phrase, to watch, or watch therefore, lest these things come upon you as a surprise or you are overwhelmed, to watch, to keep. So this sense of being diligent to the things that God has made known, the things that they have learned, the things that God has shown them, and that these same things they are to also teach them. So there's a double um, lesson going on here, one that they are keeping, watching, remembering, and at the same time they are also teaching. So they reinforce one another, the remembering, and I think Pastor Smith I mentioned it um, earlier about what happens when you teach. It helps you, the teacher, to learn and understand the subject matter better as well. And so it is vital, and it's, these are lessons that apply to us as well, yes. that we are to remember, to keep, to, to keep guard, to be on guard, and to teach those things that God has shown. And in the context of the whole covenant, and the context of salvation, that God has delivered us also, just as he has delivered Israel. And so we must remember our deliverance mm. out of sin and keep our souls because God is returning. We must be watchful and then teach these things to successive generations so that it is always present in the mind at all times. Amen. And we thank God for delivering you into church this morning that we can hear you clearly as Amen. well. Thank you very much. Um, Sister Gillette, you kind of touched on it already. I didn't know if you had anything to add in terms of, of, of teaching. Uh, I think um, Pastor Andrew has covered on all the key points. Um, I was just looking at Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 to 7, and, and basically it's just telling you how to to, to, to teach and you have to teach not just like on a on a Friday evening when it's uh when it's when when it's Sabbath or you know you you don't pick particular time. Deuteronomy six verse six or seven says, and these words which I command thee in this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, so you can see here that teaching should be done not not here or there, but all the time. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, um, Pastor Royston. Anything more coming in in terms of focusing on our destination and what we should not what we should be leaving behind? Yeah. We have a little bit of a controversy going on here. Somebody's oh saying, um, "Think about sixty sons," and he's saying, "Think about sixty to hundred meter." you don't have time to look back because it's over in a flash. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael is saying, uh-uh, it should be 110 meters hurdle because, you know, in the hurdles, you know, one bad, one bad, one bad leg mm -hmm. and, and not just yourself, but those around you will find themselves in trouble. Somebody says um, here on, on, on live stream, um, El Mombi says, um, we, we are reflective animals. I like the idea. Um, one of the best ways is to tell and to retell. 
And I'm thinking about teaching. You know, when, in year one, you know, the child learns something, right? Mm -hmm. In year two, they're learning the same thing, mm -hmm. but, but at a higher level. Yes. If they don't remember what they learned in year, in year one, they'll have problems in year two. And as you go up in the higher level, you're learning the same, same thing, same principle, but at very higher levels. So it is very important that we understand what, 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 what about this whole sprint event. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to find, Sun Sun says, the sprinter will visualize the different phase, phases in the race. Practice and take advice and, 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 and he will depend on their trainer. And I like that. We need to depend on God. That's a very good analogy there. There was a thought here that I wanted to read. Fox Rudd says, Moses knew that, that, that if the people were not careful, they would forget the 40 years of God's care in the wilderness when he gave them enough food and water, clothing to wear. Mm -hmm. And Andrew Hazel says, we're always encouraged to look. The pillar of cloud mm -hmm. and the pillar of fire led through the wilderness. The golden serpent healed when they looked. Abraham was looking for a city built by God. And somebody then talked about Lot's wife. Yes and how she looked. So it's good to look. Mm. The question is, what are you looking at? Mm. Are you looking back? Or are you looking forward? If you're looking back and you're seeing God, you'll be safe. Yeah. But if you're looking back and you're looking at the riches that you left behind, you will definitely turn into a pillar of salt. Oh. Wow, wow, what a powerful class we have there. Keep your thoughts coming in. Congregation, I don't want you to be outdone by those online. We want to hear your comments and your questions too. Okay, here's another one. Um, how has, this came from our lesson, how has the recounting of God's leading helped you not to forget his direction for your life? How does, uh, has the recounting of God's leading, and that kind of answers one of the previous questions, how does uh, the recounting of God's leading help you not to forget his direction for your life. I want to hear your comments or your thoughts or what you wrote down in your quarterly on that. Share it and we'll, we'll, we'll read it out or if you're in the church, please share it with us. So in Deuteronomy uh, 8, Moses outlined or uh, continued to paint a vivid picture, I should say, from God's word for his people. Pastor Andrew, if I can come to you, what blessings are outlined in Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 through to 10, please? We'll just read it in, in your hearing. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, and the land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates and a land of oil, olive and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. So here, uh, God is outlining uh, the blessings of the land um, that he gave his people. So one of the things that, that God did in, in this blessing, the people are blessed, the land are blessed, mm. even all the animals are blessed. And so you have these, these, these multiple blessings uh, again, that God is the one that is providing. God is fulfilling his covenant promise. He's remembering his promise to, to, to Abraham, and he's now bringing it to pass um, in the, before the eyes of the people. Um, and so this, these are the things that we must also remember, that the blessings that God has brought and is delivering to us today by the plan of salvation. He's fulfilling his covenant promise to Abraham, to our forefathers, and bringing about these things to us today. And we are yet to enter into that promised land, just as the people of Israel entered in and were blessed um, with food, with all their needs were met bountifully. Thank you. I mean, the analogy is used many times in the Bible that, you know, when you are blessed, um, you, you are eaten and full. So, uh, the, the title of that day's lesson was Eaten and Full, and you know when you've 
eaten well and you've eaten good food and not overeaten, that you have a nice feeling in you and, and, and you are full and you relax. However, could that be a problem? Sister Gillette, what warnings do we find in the following verses? Um, it, it, verses 11 to 12 and 16 to 18. So this is following on from what Moses would have just said in the verses Pastor Andrew just read for us. Okay, um, I would have done, I've just summarized these verses. In, in, in verse 11, God is saying, Beware that you forget to keep my commandments, my judgments, and my statutes. In verse 12, um, it's basically saying, Beware when you are plenty that you forget me. In verses 16 to 18, um, it, it comes as a reminder for the people to remember the miracles God did for them, that all the wealth and success and fame they had came from God, mm. not by their own works, but from God himself. God was warning them that their status in life might make them become complacent and it may give them a false sense of superiority and pompousness, and so they will forget their maker, their sustainer, their deliverer. God knows the heart of man and and how we can so easily be swayed by success. We've also seen time and time again how the people would forget the true and living God when everything was going well for them. And how many of us can relate to that? I can. Remember in Matthew 4, Satan tried to use the same strategy. He tried to use the riches of the world to tempt Jesus to bow down and worship him. If I could just refer to the story in Wednesday's lesson about the pastor who lost his suitcase. When he first lost his suitcase, he had no insurance. My assumption is that he couldn't afford it, so he relied on God to help. He did what, what he did. He didn't care what others thought. He humbled himself and he prayed. The next time the suitcase got lost, he chose not to pray, as he had insurance that covered the loss. Seems like he was financially better off and could afford insurance. Did he feel that he, could, he didn't need to rely on God through prayer? Let's remember the warnings given to the Israelites that if we ought not to let, that we ought not to let our wealth and success consume us, wherein we forget where we are coming from and what he has brought us through. And in so doing, we may neglect God. Mm, powerful thoughts there. Words like complacency feeling pompous, self-dependent, and, and like the illustration that was in the quarterly, as you're saying, the first time it was down on your knees and crying out to the Lord, the second time, don't worry, the insurance will cover it. Is there a message here, you know, about when one can afford more, when one is in a better place, that one's dependency on the almighty drops? I don't know, I don't know. Pastor Royston, let me come to you. Is anything coming in from <laughs> yeah. our... I was, looking at the, I was looking at our members to see if anybody in the congregation has any point to share about God's um, blessing in their lives. But, but someone says that when, when, when they um, remember um, God's hands in their life, you know, it, it brings enlightenment, joy, happiness, hope. As a matter of fact, they said it strengthens their faith. Um, Foxtrot said, yes, we're like, an, we're like ancient Israel. However, we're in a better position in that we have scriptures to show what happened to ancient Israel when they obey or disobey God. Mm -hmm. Isn't it strange, Elder Jordan? Because I struggle with the same thing. You know, I will read the experience of David. I'll read the experience of Saul. I'll read the experience of Lot's wife. I will see the consequences of what they've mm -hmm. done. And yet still I go and do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I'll see the experience of Joseph. I will see the experience of Esther. And I'll see what God has done. And yet still, I refuse to model what they did. Mm. Wow. You know, um, he must increase says, Remembering God helps in the past. Helps, help in the past helps us know he will do it again. We have nothing to fear. I think Ellen White said that for the future, except we shall forget the way the Lord has led us in the past and his teaching. Um, you know, we, 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 we are losing it. I mean, I'm losing it sometimes. I've lost it many times. 
you know? And, and I won't call a name, but someone will remind me of, oh, you're a pastor, you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I won't call any name. But, but, but all of us, we're like that, don't we? Mm. You know, we're, we're Christians, we're, we're Adventists, but yes, and we, we, we have all the teachings and all the knowledge, but yet still, we do the exact same thing that we're told to, rem to remember and not to forget. Indeed, thank you. Before I go to the congregation, let me just take a point from Pastor Andrew. Go ahead, sir. Um, yeah, there's, there's some critical points that have been brought out here. One of the things that is, the way this happens, it's very subtle. When good times come, there is this tendency to think that the, the good times are the works of one's own hands, as opposed to it's the same God that took us out of the bad times mm. and is blessing us with the good. So somehow, the, almost imperceptibly, we move from recognizing God as the author of the blessings to somehow these blessings are of the works of our own hands. Mm. And you'll notice the end result is always idolatry. Because even in the verses um, in, in Deuteronomy, the, the, the warning is that you don't end up in idolatry, worshipping other gods or worshipping the works of one's own hands, one's own method. The final point that I would like to share um, here that, uh, that, that, is, that is also critical is God makes these things known to the people of what they will do in the future mm -hmm. and when you shall forget or if you should forget. Mm -hmm. So there's a principle here that we can learn. So it's prophetic. You will forget. But it doesn't have to be so. Yes. Because what can happen, and with that knowledge, that, wow, is, am I really going to do that in the mm. future? I don't see it now, but God has made it known. Well, let me seek God now to prevent that future act from happening. Amen. Amen. So you seek God now based on what he's revealed in the future that will could come to pass if you are not keeping yourself or myself. So I can pray and say, Lord, let me not fulfill that which you have shown and depart from you and end up in idolatry. Keep me now and help me to remember. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let me take mum. Point from you. See, Pastor, and Pastor Andrew has gone into a bit of my saying. That's and okay. Just do your bit. Rate, at any rate, that's all right. What I see in this whole lesson is God would like us to have a heart knowledge with him, <laughs> a heart understanding with him, than just having an intellectual perception of things. You see, when the scripture speaks of having the soul with God, Within the scriptures, we are told in Genesis 2, 7, when God breathed into man, the part of himself, man became a living being, a living entity. Soul there means with your whole being, we want to serve God. So that will go with our thoughts and thinking, our words and speaking, everything, everything with that. Mm -hmm. And when we know we have erred, we have made a mistake. We bow before him and we ask him for forgiveness. Why? Because that part of him within us is telling us that, look, even though you did not come begin this situation, but you have done wrong, and so you must ask God forgiveness, and we must yield to that. But when we decide not to, then that is a different story. Mm -hmm. The an ancient Israel, this is just their history for us to see and read and to understand what has happened. Going into Canaan was the earthly movement for God, which is representing when he returns the second time here to gather his people. And unless we prepare ourselves, we have to see these lessons God speaking to us and see wherein we are making errors. We are living in the wilderness time. We need God so much because when sin occurred, he pleaded mercy and grace. We are living because of God's mercy and grace, not because of our knowledge, not because of what we know, what profession we have, what work we're doing, how much we do. No, no, no. Everyone is living because of God's mercy and grace. Amen. And once we can understand that, 
our heart knowledge for God will be one that would always bring us into subjection to his will. Mm. And when we know we forget, we say, oh, Lord, please forgive me. Help me to always remember what you require of me. Thank you. Thank and you. so this is how I see this lesson this week. Thank you. Powerful you know, thoughts. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Last question going out to our listeners and our congregation. Although most listening would probably welcome a little bit more money if it was offered, we can still thank God for his blessings. How can we protect ourselves from the pitfalls of wealth as outlined in the scripture? Let's have your thoughts for those listening on who may be battling with too much money. Who knows? Um, there are several references in Deuteronomy where God wants Israel to remember they were once slaves. Now, Sister Juliet, why would God keep reminding Israel of those dark days? You know, if somebody came up in the street and said to you, ah, oh, Juliet, you are the great, 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 great of a slave. Is that something then that makes you smile? Well, why would God keep reminding Israel of those dark days? <laughs> okay, so... In Deuteronomy 22, verse 18 and 22, we see God telling the people to remember how they were in bondage and how he saved them. I think the emphasis was more on the suffering they endured when they were in bondage. Have you ever known, like, some people who have had rough upbringings but managed to excel in life and then forget where they're coming from? The Israelites were like that. A lot of us have that same sort of mentality. When we're on dry land, so to speak, we forget the trials and the tribulations that came from the storms that God has brought us through. Like the Israelites, every time they hit rock bottom, they remembered God. And that's why some of us will always be facing trials and tribulations in order to bring us down on our knees to remember our makeup. Mm. Another key point why God wanted them to remember their sufferings as well was that they will be able to remember how it felt to be downtrodden, to be abused, to be slaves. In so doing, they may have compassion on others and to also help others through their sufferings. Thank you, thank you. Um, before I go to you, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Royston, are there any comments coming in at this point? I can come back to you later, but I'm, I'm, I'm conscious that you may have some building up there. I like Deborah, uh, Deborah Katari. She says, God has put in everything in place to aid us in salvation mm -hmm. and even triggers. I like that. God has put everything in place um, for us to be saved. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that hell was made for the devil and his angel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But some of us are fighting to get in. As a matter of fact, some of us, some of, some of us are actually pushing the devil and his angels out mm -hmm. of the way. Mm -hmm. What a tragedy, eh? Indeed. Um, Michael, as the Bible says, money is the root of all evil. Uh, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says the love of money mm -hmm. is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. uh, Michael. So when money becomes your object, you know, becomes your subject. Um, Simon Cowell says, you know, once, he says... I wish I could take all my money, put it in a room and roll over it. Mm. Well, actually, Steve Jobs had more money than anybody else. Uh, but he, he got sick. Mm. And all the money in the world couldn't save him. That's right. Uh, Anthony Brummel says, the major pit pitfall of love of money is not only the source of evil, but more importantly, it tends to displace the role of God in our lives as well as his provision. Powerful thought. Um, Andrew says, God always has our best interest at heart. I wish, above all, that you may prosper and be in good health, even as mm. your soul prospered. Mm. The Bible shows that all that were rich without a rich spirit will suffer. Um, K. Karen Bibi says, without money we can't live unless we are living by faith. Yes. Well, yes. Foxtrot says, and you're talking about money, Elder, um, Elder Johnny, it's, it's, it is only too easy to think that we have no need of God in our lives. When, when our bellies are full, mm. life is good, and the future mm. seems assured, but wealth mm. can dull our senses to what is happening around us. Mm. Um, Clive says here on live stream, doesn't have to be a pitfall of wealth. Our prayer life turns 
into a life of giving. So um, you, you think about um, Job was very rich. Yes. Um, Abraham was very rich. Uh, I, I don't mind having more money. I, I, and if we are true, all of us don't mind having more money. It's not the money, but it's how you use it. Yes. How it controls you, how it influences you. As somebody says, money can buy bed, but it can't buy sleep. All right. It can right. buy a ring, but it can't buy love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to come back to you shortly, but let me go to Pastor Andrew at this time. Just going back to this thing of, of bondage, and Sister Gillette was just saying there that it's not so much about God trying to put um, his children, the children of Israel in a bad place. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a message for us today, and we've started to touch on this already, in, in terms of not forgetting our own bondage, Pastor Andrew? Um, yes, and actually it it ties what some of the viewers online have, have been sharing as well uh, about wealth um, and self-sufficiency. So I'll, I'll bridge the gap and bridge into, in, into the point because they, they, they are linked. Self-sufficiency, self-independence, wealth, and, and these trappings of doing well in life are actually an illusion. Mm. Because what we actually need is dependency, because this is how man was created, dependent upon God, not independent of him. Yes. So here then is the illusion. The, the, the wealth, or it can become an illusion if you fall to it. And self-sufficiency is that we do not realize that our slavehood, if that is a word, is to sin. Mm. But we are under the illusion that we are not enslaved because we have wealth or because we have self-sufficiency and we are independent. And by the standards of the human eyes and to others, we are doing well. But wealth, self-sufficiency cannot deliver us from sin. That's right. And that's why the text that, that, that in, in Ephesians 2, um, verses 8 to 13, I'll just read part, uh, a couple of the verses. Um, verse 8 says... For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, yes. not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And here's another critical verse. If we jump down to verse 12, where it says that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise. Now, this covenant of promise is the promise of salvation Amen. by God making available a new heart and his spirit that humanity can keep the commandments and remember them and not forget them. Yes. That's the covenant promise. And then it goes on to say, um, the covenant promise having no hope and without God in the world. Mm -hmm. And here is what the illusion of wealth and self-sufficiency brings. It, 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 it keeps us from recognizing our need of Christ yes. and that we are in a hopeless and an enslaved situation. But here's the good news. Verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of of Christ. Amen. For he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So that then through Jesus Christ, his blood removes us from the illusion of the staged life and takes us into the narrow way where we live by faith by the Spirit of God, having our sins washed and cleansed because we have confessed and been forgiven by the God who loves us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I can't believe it. The time has, is far spent, as we say. So, Pastor Royston, I want to take the final comments if our panellists just prepare their final takeaway points for us. Pastor Royston. I think Jennifer Mann says, Nebuchadnezzar was blessed. He forgot who blessed him. Um, he allowed pride to rule his life. He failed to acknowledge God as the one who bestowed on him his riches and power became foolish with pride. Um, Karen reminds us, the Bible says that we should lay not our treasures on this earth, but to lay them up in heaven. Mm. So our focus shouldn't be about making money, but to focus on God. Um, um, Juliet, oh, well, I'm just somebody from my home church saying, hello, Pastor Smith. Hello, Juliet. I hope Norwood Church is doing very well. 
Um, Tom Tom over there in Dudley says, love of money is not evil, but, but a root to evil. We should guard that when we have it. It doesn't develop root. And finally, Jennifer says, God gives the power to get wealth. He owns everything, but when we have attained by him, giving us the power to be rich, we forget. Jesus said, the camel versus the rich person. Um, you know, we know this text about the camel. Yeah. It's easier to go to the eye of a needle um, than for the rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the Kutza finally says, it's good to, rem to remind ourselves of Psalms 127 verse 1, which says, unless the Lord build a house, they that labor, labor but in vain. I'm sure the, those online can hear the voices of my members repeating. Over to you, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Sister Gillette, um, your takeaway point for us today, please. Remember our sufferings so we can empathize with others. Remember we are in bondage, bondage to sin, and the only way out is through God's grace. Remember we need to play our part, and that is to keep God's commandments and have the faith of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. And Pastor Andrew. Wow, yes. Um, the relevance to us today, uh, Jesus is coming soon. We are living in the Day of Atonement. So it's a solemn occasion where our hearts are to be searched and we are to see where we are with God. Let us remember the covenant of God, the covenant history, what God has made available to give us that new heart, to give us his spirit, to enable us to live in the spirit and not in the flesh. And then finally, to teach this covenant history to our children that they may grow in the narrow way and that they themselves may teach their children that we may be prepared and ready for when Jesus comes. Amen. Thank you. And Pastor Royston. Um, you know, I'm kind of saying, you know, we, all of us, we, we have amnesia. All of us. We have amnesia when we forget God. Um, many of us, um, we are... We're heading to Canaan, but we're still having Egypt mentality. Mm. That's a problem. Mm. Um, the only way, and um, Elder Moby said it very well, he says the, the best life is only found in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. abundantly. Let us look forward and let's, let us not forget where God has taken us from. Thank you. Uh, for me, for some, it's easy to take our minds and the ability to remember for granted. God knew the problem we will face in these challenging times to always remember to be obedient to his word. As Proverbs 7 verse 3 says, bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Thank you so much for being with us today and for a wonderful time of lesson study. I hand you back now to our superintendent, Sister Claudia. Thank you, uh, Johnny, and to Pastor and to the, the team. We thank you for the words that you have put forward today. Let me extend another welcome again to those who have just joined us. We are glad that you have made it to Croydon this morning. Thanks for all the comments, suggestions, and questions from our viewers and our congregation alike. I hope you have blessed and that God often tells us to remember all the things that he has done for us, to remember his grace, his goodness, but most importantly, we must not forget what our calling, is in, our calling in him is and what kind of people we should be in response to that calling. Or we should respond. We can find it in 1 Peter 1, verses 15 and 16. But, has he, but as he who called you in, is holy, you also should be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, we want to thank you for your kindness towards us. Help us to remember all the good things you have done in the past and what your plans for us in the future. Let us strive to be good, 
strive, strive to be like you, to be holy, so that, Lord, when you should come, we are ready to be taken home to you. Be with us now, be with the proceeding of the day. Help us, Lord, to remember of your kindness and your mercy to us. Thank you for hearing us and answering us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.